welcome to the 6th lecture in mechanics of materials continuing from the previous lecture we are going to look at the concept of stress. In the previous lectures we looked what traction is, traction was defined as the distributed force acting over a curved surface or boundary of the body and we said that the traction will be denoted by T's of n and this in general would be a function of the position vector of the material particle in the current configuration time t and the normal n the normal to the cut surface. We also saw that the traction on two opposite cut faces should be equal and n's t of n plus t of minus c n should be equal to 0 at a particular point. This is essentially the Newton's third law of motion that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So, we saw that these two conditions have to hold and hence we said that the traction would be linearly related to the normal n. related to n and hence we went about understanding what that linear relationship is which we called it as second order tensor. This linear relationship between two dot line segments was called as second order tensor. Order tensor was defined as the linear function between two directed line segments also called as vector. Okay. So, we saw that there is a tensor product which goes into representing a second order tensor. So, A for example would be represented as A j dot E i E i tensor product E j right. So, this is what we saw in the last class where this is the components of a second order tensor A i j and this is like the basis vector 1 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 or 0 1 0 0 0 0 like that it will form a basis vector basis matrices. Okay. So, that is what we saw in the last class. In today's class we said that T would be linearly related to n, we said that T would T sub n would be linearly related to n and that gives rise to the definition of stress. In particular we define T of n to be related to n through a stress tensor this is called as stress tensor. Why I am defining it with a transpose the superpose T denotes this denotes transpose of the tensor. Okay. So, let us go about understanding how to find the components of the stress sensor or in other words what does the components of the stress sensor mean that is what we are trying to find. Okay. So, we said that uh, x being mapped on by a y is example of uh, linear mapping mapping the data line segments y to data line segments x. Now, let us go about looking at the traction we wrote traction as sigma transpose n. Now, I am interested in fi finding the components of sigma components of the tensor sigma. Okay. So, now what is 
sigma i j sigma i j would be sigma e j dotted with e i. Going back to the definition of the tensor a i j is a e j dotted with e i we find that sigma i j would be sigma e j dotted with e i. Now let us understand what the transpose means this I have explained in lecture 3 also. So, if I have a dot a b this is same as a transpose acting on a dotted with b this is the definition of transpose of transpose of a second order tensor. Okay. So, basically if you want to uh, take A operating on B to A operating on A that will come with a transpose symbol there. Okay. Having understood this let us do the transpose operation here this will be sigma transpose E i dotted with E j that is nothing but T's of E i dotted with E j. So, sigma i j can be interpreted as the jth component of the traction acting on the ith side. Let us explain understand what this means. I have a body, first I have a coordinate system E x, E y, E z and I have a body now. I am interested in finding the stress at this point. What do I do? I go about isolating an infinitesimal cube about that point. I am enlarging this cube I am enlarging that cube. Now, this phase as E x as is normal, this phase as E x as the normal. On this phase, there will be a traction that will be acting, there will be a traction that is acting like this. This is T s of E x, okay. there will be a traction T s of E x acting like that. Now, what do I do? I find the components of this traction by projecting it onto E x. E y and E z. When I project the components of the traction onto E x, E y and E z is sigma x x. Now, let us do the operation. I have sigma would be say sigma x x, sigma x y, sigma x z, sigma y x, sigma y y, sigma y z, sigma z x sigma z y sigma z z. Okay. Now, the components of it is sigma transpose acted upon by E i. So, T s of E x would be sigma transpose E x. So, this will be sigma x x, sigma x y, sigma x z, sigma y x sigma y y sigma y z sigma z x sigma z y sigma z z into 1 0 0 that is going to give me sigma x x sigma x y sigma x z. Okay. So, this is T s of E x. So, 
the component of E x along E x direction is sigma x x. Similarly, similarly sigma x y would be the component of T of E x along E y direction which will be this, this will be sigma x y and similarly uh, sigma x z would be the component of this traction along the z direction. So, this will be sigma x z. Okay. So, what does the first index indicate? The first index indicates the normal to the surface on which the stress components are written. The second index indicates the direction of the force along which the direction of the force. Okay. If I write sigma i j, the first index this denotes the normal to the it indicates the normal to the surface and the second index indicates the direction of the force. The second index indicates the direction of the force. Okay. So, basically now how do I know the direction of the direction that I have indicated is the direction for the stress components sigma x x, sigma x y and sigma x z are assumed to be positive. Since they are positive numbers they should be along the coordinate direction in which the coordinate system is. Now let us go a step further and then see what happens in the other phase. Let us see what happens in the other phase. This phase the normal is like this, this is negative E x direction. Okay. So, now I have T of minus E x that would be sigma x x y x sigma z x sigma x y sigma x z sigma y y sigma y z sigma z y sigma Z Z acted upon by minus 1 0 0. Now, this will give me T's of minus E x as minus sigma x x minus sigma x y minus sigma x z. Since sigma x x x y and x z are assumed to be positive numbers, now these are negative numbers indicating that the direction of the stress direction of the force in the negative phase should be opposite to the orientation of the coordinate system okay. and hence sigma x x would act like this or first let me draw the T's of minus E x should have the same magnitude but opposite in direction. So, these two are parallel opposite in direction and uh, sigma z z on this phase sigma x x on this phase would be opposite to the coordinate system because sigma x is positive and we got a negative sigma x x and hence we are drawing it opposite to the direction of E x. Similarly, sigma x y what we got was minus sigma x y and hence it would be opposite to the coordinate system. So, this is sigma x y. Okay. Similarly, sigma x z should also be opposite to the coordinate system and hence this will be sigma x z. Okay. So, in two phases we got the orientation of the stresses to be opposite to each other, but same in the magnitude. In other words what this tells us is what this tells us is the tensile stresses are positive sigma x x and sigma x s are opposite direction they pull the kind of pull the cube and hence it is positive. This does not mean that we assume tension as positive it is a consequence of assuming a coordinate system and writing the components of tensor with respect to that coordinate system. Okay. Now, let us move further and see what happens to this phase in this in to the top phase. The top phase the normal is E y and the traction is acting on that phase would be something like this T is of E y and a component of this traction along the normal direction would be this that will be sigma y y. Okay. The component of the uh, traction along the x axis would be like this 
this is a positive direction positive normal the number is going to be positive and hence this direction to be along the direction of the coordinate system. So, this is going to be sigma y x right the normal is y is acting along the x direction. So, it is sigma y x and then the third component of t's of e y is going to act along the z direction and hence this is sigma y z ok. So, we have seen what the stresses are on the E x phase E y phase I am now just going to draw components of the stress on the E z phase this phase I am going to draw it I leave it for you to understand how I got these things it should be clear by now I am how I am getting these stress components. So, you have E z acting on this phase. So, the traction would be acting in some inclined manner like this, this is T is of E z and now the component along the normal direction would be sigma z z and then this component would be sigma z y and this component is going to be sigma z x ok, that component is going to be sigma z x. That is the reason why I drew sigma x y and uh, y x with the same color they will be same in magnitude which will show later in the stress tensor is a symmetric tensor ok. Now, we understood how you got how you get the components of a stress tensor the way we get the components of stress tensor is we go to a point in the body draw an infinitesimal cube such that the sides of the cube have its normal along the coordinate directions once you get the sides of the cube oriented along the coordinate directions then the sigma x x sigma y y and sigma z z would act along the normal to the each of the x y and z faces and hence they are called as normal stresses these three are called as normal stresses because they are acting normal to the face ok and the remaining three components are called as shear stresses because they are acting parallel to the surface ok. So, this is how you find the components of the stress matrix or stress tensor.